Hi, today we will be looking at something that's actually very popular in pharmacology. That's the Dale's vasomotor reversal and re reversal. Okay, now. Before we actually get into the depth, we need some basics. Okay, if you guys actually already know the basics of adrenaline and its receptors, you can skip ahead. Okay, for those who don't, just stick around. Adrenaline can't act directly and cause the effects that we know it causes, like increase in heart rate and increase in BP and all that. It acts through some receptors. Yeah, and those receptors then lead to the action. Okay, now adrenaline has two main types of receptors alpha, beta. Alpha again divided into alpha 1 and alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. Now, for this case, Dale's vasomotor reversal and re reversal depends on BP, okay, and blood vessels, okay, vasomotor, vaso, vascular, and blood vessels. Now, what does alpha 1 and beta 2 because these are the two main things that act on blood vessels when adrenaline acts on them okay now when adrenaline acts on alpha 1 there's going to be vasoconstriction which means that the area of the cut section of the area of the blood vessel is decreasing and the opposite happens in beta 2 there is vasodilation which means the area of the blood vessels is increasing and when this happens BP is going to increase because the same amount of blood has to flow through a smaller area and hence there's going to be included in increase in blood pressure and alpha 1 is stimulated and when beta 2 is stimulated there's going to be fall in BP easy now we'll put this to the test okay so imagine that we are having a graph okay this is a BP versus time graph. Now, initially, I have not administered any drugs. So, initially, I'm going to have a normal BP. This is normal. Now, when I administer adrenaline here, this is going to be an increase in BP. Why? Because it's acting on alpha 1 receptors. One thing you have to note here, take a side note. For alpha receptors to get activated, you need high concentration of adrenaline. And for beta, even the low concentration will work. It's a side note. Okay. And the power of alpha receptors is more than beta receptors in this case. So the vasoconstriction is overpowering the vasodilation. So when I'm initially administering the adrenaline, it's in a high concentration. So alpha and beta are getting activated but since alpha vasoconstriction is more powerful i'm only going to see increase in bp and also because there's a somewhat beta 1 stimulation beta 1 is actually a cardiac stimulant so the heart rate and the force of contraction is going up so forget about it just say that because of it acting on alpha 1 there's vasoconstriction and hence we are having an increase in bp so after a while there's going to be digestion of the adrenaline which we have administered there's going to be a metabolism and hence the the concentration of adrenaline comes down okay to the point where alpha and beta stimulation are equal alpha 1 and beta 2 stimulation are equal and then here the beta 2 overpowers it okay and after a point the alpha stimulation is gone and there's only beta 2 and because of this beta 2 stimulation you're going to see a lot of vasodilation and hence the blood pressure is going to fall below normal and after a while the whole adrenaline is going to get digested and you're going to get a normal bp again this is what you call a biphasic reaction okay so we can see a phase one where there's an increase in bp a phase two where there's a decrease in bp so this is called a biphasic reaction okay biphasic now, we have not even got into the meat of the matter. The meat of the matter. What would happen if I gave an alpha blocker? 
okay imagine i gave the person an alpha blocker let's say we'll take the non selective alpha blocker uh, which is uh, phentolamide okay we could take phenoxybenzamine but that's a irreversible one so we'll take the reversible one here okay i'm taking the alpha blocker it's a overall alpha blocker so what happens is we get back to our chart and i've given the alpha blocker okay this is the normal bp i gave my alpha blocker here okay now i'm going to administer adrenaline and instead of seeing a biphasic reaction we're just going to see a fall in bp and after adrenaline is digested we're going to get back the normal bp okay why because alpha blockers have blocked the alpha receptors and alpha receptors were the one responsible for this increase in bp because they were once constricting and that's not happening there is nothing to overpower the beta 2 stimulation and hence only the beta 2 receptors are getting activated and there's going to be a fall in bp this is dale's reversal okay this is the reversal now what's the re-reversal okay re-reversal is interesting instead of alpha blocker let's say we give them a beta blocker example propranolol okay this is the non-selective beta blocker which we are giving and it's going to block the beta two receptors and so we come back to our graph normal blood pressure i'm administering propranolol then i'm administering adrenaline and i'm going to see an increase in bp and it falls back because of digestion of adrenaline and normal there's not going to be a vasodilation because the beta blockers have been blocked this is re-reversal might be wondering why this point is well if beta blockers when i give beta blockers i'm going to see something like this i mean i'm going to see a rise in bp then why are beta blockers used in the treatment of hypertension well you see what happens is beta blockers as i said will be blocking the beta receptors now beta 1 and beta 2 now beta 2 as i said when adrenaline acts on beta 2 receptors there's going to be a fall in bp yeah so when i administer a beta blocker i'm expecting to see a rise in bp well what about beta 1 when adrenaline acts on beta 1 okay i am going to see cardiac stimulation that is increase in rate of contraction increasing in force of contraction overall i increase in bp now when a beta blocker acts on this even though there's a fall in even though there's a rise in bp because of the blockage and fall in bp I am still going to see a decrease in cardiac function because of which I am going to see a fall in BP regardless of vasoconstriction. Okay, recap when there is a blockage of beta 2 receptors, I am going to see vasoconstriction and increase in BP. But prolonged use of beta blockers is going to lead and decrease in BP because of blockage of beta 1 receptors which are responsible for cardiac stimulation. Okay, good.